Today we're going to do a basic lithium battery upgrade on a travel trailer. In this case, it's a Transcend. I think it's about 30 some feet. They got the uh, lead acid battery there on the tongue. We're going to remove that, but I'll show you how you uh, keep your tongue uh, jack and the safety uh, brake cables and all that stuff still working properly, at least the way we do it. And then uh, how we put the lithium battery, we're going to put it inside. I definitely recommended that especially with the uh, with these self-heated options. They just work a little bit more efficiently. And uh, we're gonna be adding an additional charge controller up there and how to keep it all safe and uh, get you boondocking longer, enjoying it. Because that, that's what it's about. <laughs> you know, you, some people might be mistaken thinking you get an RV to spend money, but no, you actually do it to enjoy the outdoors. And that's what this is about. Enjoying the outdoors a little bit longer, a little bit better. So to start, we've got this uh, 206 amp hour self-heated uh, SOK battery. I've already top balanced it. Uh, that means leaving it on a slow trickle charger um, for a couple of days. That brings all the cells up so they get nice and balanced. I recommend doing that. And just to make sure that the BMS wakes up, all that stuff. Just make sure your battery is working good before you install it. I've been there, made mistakes, and uh, <laughs> then you gotta rip it all back out because something's not working right. Uh, and if, if anybody's curious why we really like these SOK batteries, one of the reasons, other than just the price is great these days too, but really we don't buy just on price. These are all, uh, these are screws here. You can pop this cover off and replace a part and service it. It's not that bad. It's not magic. Uh, if you can change your oil, you can service a battery. Uh, change oil in a car, not just like an air not like a fryer or something. But if you can do that, change the oil in a fryer, that's fine too. <laughs> I'm rambling, I'm rambling. Uh, but I wanted to compare like, let's say like a lead time battery. This is all sealed. If something goes wrong with this, your SOL, I mean, for the most part, unless you wanna heat gun it off and fix it, but they're not really gonna support that. I know SOK in the past has sent out a straight uh, new BMS board if there's a problem with it. And you know, then you're up and working again. Because 99% of the time what fails is the circuitry in the BMS board. I'll show you what, what, what one of those looks like here real quick. Uh, that's what fails, not the cells. So inside those batteries are cells, something like this, right? And uh, then what also is in there is... And then inside the battery case itself is something like this. This is a BMS protection board. And all it does is it monitors the battery, keeps it all healthy. Uh, unlike your old lead acid batteries like this guy here, because it's pretty much toast. You know, you can drain that thing down, you can kill it. With lithium, uh, you really can't hurt it. You really can't. You can try and discharge it, it won't let you. You can try and overcharge it, it won't let you. You can try and charge it when it's cold, at least these ones, they won't let you do that. You try and discharge it, if it gets too hot, they won't let you do that. They're the, they're the greatest thing since, well, I don't know. They're pretty darn good. All right, let's get some light on in this situation. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a board up here cover it in carpet, make it look nice, uh, attach the new charger and a breaker box to protect everything. So we're leaving this uh, Furion charger in here because we got panels up on top, we're gonna leave those. We're actually just adding uh, ground deploy panels. So we're basically creating a separate system. We'll run them in parallel. And then uh, here's how we'll connect it into the rest of the system, I pulled this panel off. We've got the uh, shunt right here for this. That's the that's that right there, which isn't terribly accurate, but it's better than nothing. So uh, we will leverage that. And we'll be connecting to the P minus terminal. We want all of our positive or um, loads on this side. The battery minus goes to the battery, and that's only to the battery. So. Uh, when we put the battery in here, we will connect it directly to there. On this side, we will connect uh, the positives to the positive post on here. All right, here's the uh, board we're putting together. We'll walk through what I'm doing here. Uh, we got a double uh, or four-way box. 
This will be the cover that goes over it. And what we're doing here is we've got a 32 amp for the solar uh, input, and then we've got a 60 amp here for the charger itself. And this is rated at 50. We're using six gauge wire. Six gauge is good from anywhere from 50 to 70 amps, maybe even higher, depending on your source of truth on that. So uh, we're protecting the wire at 60 amps. Mostly what this is gonna be used for is a way to turn it off, or that's on. So uh, I like using these. In this situation, I was actually considering using one of these breakers, but I was like, wait a minute, we already, well, I'm already putting a box in here anyway. Let's just add another one in there. So that's the way we're going to go with that. And then I'm basically pre-wiring and assembling all of this on this table, which is not as nice and neat as I'd like it. We're putting things together here in the new shop. Uh, but anyway, I'm doing all of this work here rather than crawling in that compartment there. And that's what I would recommend to anybody who's doing this. Make sub-assemblies and install those sub-assemblies. Uh, we, we don't got time to be pulling our back and making new aches and pains on our bodies, right? Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you think the same. All right, uh, I better get back at this here. Okay, we're getting things set up here. You can see uh, we've got that board mounted up there, getting some wiring done. And uh, a couple of things I wanna talk about here real quick. Let's uh, zoom in one level here. This is as I found this side. See that lock washer and the washer in between the lug and the terminal? This is from the factory. Now, this is only six gauge wiring there, so it's not the end of the world, but you don't want your lock washers in between your terminals and your lugs. That's gonna lead to heat if you're drawing any kind of significant amps. So keep that in mind. Then the other thing I want to talk about, which is here on our uh, back of our switch here. You can see I've got a wire run here. I actually changed it up. This is where the battery comes to. And I hooked it back up there. And I was thinking about going over here so that the battery disconnect would actually disconnect things. But then I thought better of it. And we're going to keep it right here. The reason for that is uh, there's some stuff that needs to always be on because this is where the other old battery came from as well. So basically, in short, what we're doing is the SOK battery is there and we're just relocating it. So we want to connect everything up right back the way it was. And I'll tell you why this positive connection is so important. So the electrical system in a RV or travel trailer like this, it supplies all the loads inside and those are all protected. But there are other loads, believe it or not, that are not protected. And that's by design. Uh, specifically, the uh, brakes back there. I imagine the uh, National Transportation Safety Board or whoever decides this sort of stuff had a decision to make. And that decision is, do you want a uh, travel trailer going out of control down the road um, where the brakes maybe use too much power, they broke away, whatever. Uh, but the circuit protection, circuit protection kicked in and said, nope, pulling too many amps. We don't want to fire. Instead, we're going to have an out of control vehicle going down the road. Uh, so instead, they made the choice of, we would rather have a travel trailer on fire, but under control. And you know what? That makes sense to me. You can get that under control, get over the side of the road, let it burn down, nobody's hurt. You got one of these going at 70, 65, whatever miles an hour you're driving, uh, you, you want the brakes to work no matter what. And that's why it's important to always, uh, believe it or not, have an unfused line from the uh, battery to the trailer brakes. All right, sounds good. It is a cold one here. This morning, got the uh, solar bear out there. Yeah, not a lot of sun. We're just trying to see if these uh, portable panels we're putting on this rig, <clears throat> how that's gonna work. Well, actually, I shouldn't say portable, ground deploy. These are actually 200 watt, uh, 24 volt style panels. And I like to use those, I'll just remind everybody, uh, cause they actually run at like a 36 to 40 volt nominal. So, they're way more efficient on a long run like this. 
So that way this customer can put them wherever they need so they can stay camping in the shade. Got that all put together in there. <clears throat> and uh, now I got, uh, so this battery there, it's actually only at about 10 degrees right now. Uh, Fahrenheit, it's trying to warm up, but we just, we're not getting quite enough sun. We really, we need about 100 watts to get that thing warming properly. But it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's not bad. We'll uh, maybe check in on it later today and see if it warms itself up much. It's about, uh, what is it? Bear, what is it? It's maybe one, two degrees Fahrenheit right now. What are you chewing on? Just doing bear stuff. All right, I'm cold. I'm, I'm going back in there. Well, it's a bright sunny morning. And now the, uh, the heater in that battery is working great and consistent. It's actually at about 35 degrees right now, uh, the battery temp. And here in the on location at uh, Sol Soda Solar HQ, it is about two. So it's definitely working and we'll, uh, we'll see when that's warm enough to actually take a charge. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you just waiting patiently? Look at this guy, he's getting so big. Getting so big. Uh, from all of us here at Soda Solar, uh, give us a subscribe or leave a comment down below if you have any questions or uh, you want help on your system. Check out our website, sotasolar.com, S O T A S O L A R. And uh, once again, from all of us here, thank you and we will see you next time.